Hello, this video is going to cover all of the electronic -y bits on my combat robots, my Antwerp combat robots. So I'm going to go all the way from you have no money to you're willing to spend it anyway. Um, and I'm also going to cover the modular control board that I made, which lets me swap my components from robot to robot so I don't have to buy a new speed controller and a new receiver for every single bot. Let's start with the modular control board because it is coolest. So this is basically all of the components that are common between these two robots attached to a single board and wired to a header strip, which then plugs into the female side on both of the robots. I am running more current than you should through these header pins, so if you do this, probably find a different connection method. The first component is my six channel receiver, and this is a package with the six channel remote from Hobby King. This is a really good deal for a six channel uh, 2.4 gigahertz setup. It's got a plug in the back, so if you buy the cable, you can plug it into your computer and do some programming. The app isn't very good, but it does let you do channel mixing, so I have channels one and two mixed. That way, when I press forward, both drive motors go forward. So a uh, good, good receiver there. Then, uh, then I have my FingerTech Tiny ECE speed controllers, and you can see that some of the wiring is still exposed right now. That is because this one I actually purchased sophomore year of high school, which was like nine years ago, and that has finally died, so that is going to be replaced with this one, which I will be doing shortly. Um, I've run both FingerTech uh, ECEs and Sabertooth ECEs, and I've had success with both of them. Finger techs are just lighter weight, so they're a really, really common choice for combat robots, especially the antiweights. So you can see that I have the, uh, the power wired, actually you can't really see any of that because it's all a mess, but the power is wired to the middle two pins on this header strip, and then the outer two pins go to the motors. So the outer two right pins go to the right motor, outer two left pins go to the left motor, and um, that's how this is all all soldered up, and uh, yeah, some, some mess of soldering there, but I'll be replacing that. Um, and then another thing, the third thing I have on this board is my battery illumination circuit. And I didn't realize I had to have this because the speed controllers have a battery illumination circuit built in, but it wasn't sufficient to drive the servos on the Crave Monster, so it was getting... Uh, I was doing weird things. So I had to get a battery illumination circuit. The one you buy will depend on what batteries you're running. Um, this is a three cell, so I just had to make sure that it could uh, you know, convert from, it could handle the voltage of the batteries and move it down to five volts to power the receiver. The last thing that I have is this light, which is required under the rules of the competition I'm in. So all, of, all this is is a servo plug, one resistor, and then the LED, um, and it just plugs into channel six and lights up when the receiver is powered. Um, so that is it for the control board. When this board is in the Crave Monster, there are two additional things that need plugged in. I have a servo that goes to channel three, which runs the lip of the dustpan there, and I have a servo that's in channel four, which then runs the mouth. That was weird. Anyway. So the, uh, um, the two servos are all that needs to be plugged in, and then to turn it on and off, the battery connection comes up, it's exposed, it's easy to get to, and I can, uh, can turn it on and off that way. I will be adding for the competition a rubber band around this board just so that it doesn't get knocked free. This is the modular control board on Danger Zone. It plugs in 90 degrees uh, compared to the Crave Monster, but that's not really too much of an issue with wiring. There are no servos on this robot. All that needs plugged in is the uh, speed controller for the weapon motor, which goes into channel three there and wraps around. The, uh, the speed controller does need its own power, so the battery cable actually splits Half goes to the speed controller for the weapon drive, the other half goes to the modular control board, and... So it'll spin up there. I have had issues with balancing it, so there's a crap ton of epoxy on the drum, which is embarrassing. But uh, yeah, that's a little spin up. The, uh, the modular control board does create a pretty big disadvantage for this robot, and that is that it is not invertible with the big control board on top. And uh, that's, 
And that's a case where if I had actually integrated the electronics into the battery, I hadn't done the modular thing, the robot would have been better off. But uh, for me, I just needed to save money. I only had these uh, uh, these components, so it, it works for me. Another thing that could be an advantage of a modular design like this is if you have a single robot, you could have multiple boards. And if there's an electronic failure, you don't have to spend time debugging. You could pop it off, throw a new one on, and hopefully most of your problems would be solved. Um, but uh, for me, it's it's being used in two robots. Like the Crave Monster, there's a rubber band that's going to stretch around and uh, attach to the chassis to hold the board down. Probably another one going the other direction. The big failure point could be a hit knocking the whole board off. That's a concern. I might actually, before these rounds, be tacking it with some glue and then actually breaking it off every time just to uh, be extra safe. So, uh, yeah, it's an experimental thing, and I'm not, I mean, this whole, everything's experimental. That, that, that's what's fun about it. But we'll see how it goes, and I will move on now to if you don't want to spend money on all these components, and if you just want to use a remote control car. As is readily apparent by looking at this guy, this is the cheap robot, and this was made using the guts of a remote control hovercraft. If you're going to go into, uh, you know, into one of these ant weight combat robots, uh, and you don't want to have an active weapon, this is actually a really way, really good way to go. You just grab a remote control car, pull it apart, and take the uh, receiver out, and you will see two wires that go to the battery, two wires that go to one motor, two wires that go to another motor. You just pull it all out and wire it up to your own robot, and assuming you have a remote control vehicle that has tank drive, which means both sticks go forward and backwards instead of one going left and right. Assuming you have that type of remote and that type of setup, you can pretty easily attach whatever motors you want for uh, ant weight robot and make a little wedge like we've done here. One last thing, there is a middle ground between using the guts of a remote control car and buying all the gizmos that we have here, and that's this guy, which is a robot that my brother tried to build in one day but didn't get finished, so probably won't be coming to the competition. But this uses servos modified for continuous rotation for the drive wheels. And if you look at tutorials online, you can find uh, different servos have different methods of modifying them for continuous rotation. But the gist of it is you remove the physical mechanical stops, and then you either glue the potentiometer in the center position, or you remove the potentiometer and replace it with resistors. And when you then give it a command, it'll rotate continuously, exactly like a motor paired with a speed controller would do. So this can be plugged directly into the receiver and then used to power the drive wheels. It's a, it's a good method if you don't want to spend, you know, I don't remember what the speed controllers here cost, but I think it ended up being like 60 bucks for two of them. You can save that money if you have servos lying around that can be modified and uh, just uses your drive wheels. If I had silver spray paint, I'd make this Mad Max theme. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. That's it with the electronics, and uh, I will be hopefully competing on Saturday and showing how this does. And uh, fun fact, this was filmed with my cell phone taped to a pool stick, taped to a chair. Have a good day, guys.